Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video I'm going over the basics of ARM assembly as requested by many people after watching this video here about how exploits are created and developed. And uh, in this video I basically mentioned that assembly language for the platform you're working on is a thing you're definitely going to need to know to be able to write exploits and discover vulnerabilities and understand it at a lower level. So if you haven't already seen this video, I'll leave a link to it. It's on my main channel. But in this video, my second channel, I'm basically explaining the basics of ARM assembly and show you how to write a very simple ARM assembly program. So for those of you who don't understand what ARM assembly is at all, then I'll do a quick explanation of it. So let's say, for example, you're writing an iOS app in Xcode and you have your code written in Objective-C. When you actually compile this and install this app on your device, the app uh, is converted into a binary file which is executed by the device. And this file is just made up of ones and zeros. So you cannot really read this file unless you spend a long time analyzing it and working out what each bit does. So basically ARM assembly code is the in-between which um, uses English words uh, or parts of English words to represent each instruction in binary. So it basically allows you to read a binary file and dis disassemble a program such as Hopper can uh, take apart a binary file and produce you the assembly code. So you get something like this and you can see the assembly code for each function. So the reason that learning this kind of code is useful is number one, as I mentioned in this video, if you're interested in vulnerability research, exploit development, stuff like that, then you'll be working with assembly code all the time. You'll be basically analyzing this to discover vulnerabilities and find out how things work. So this will be definitely be must needed knowledge to uh, understand how to read this. But even if you are just a regular iOS app developer or any other kind of developer not uh, related to iOS, this could still help you um, in the long term with debugging programs or um, finding errors in your apps and understanding what actually happens at a lower level. To actually write code in ARM assembly, it's basically just like doing very, very simple maths. So you basically have 16 registers which are part of your device's processor. So on an ARM v7 processor, which is what I'm going to be doing this as an example, so this is the processor that the 32-bit iPhones have, so the iPhone 5, the 4S, the 4, and so on. Uh, these devices have 16 registers and they're, they're numbered R1, oh sorry, R0 up to R15, and these are basically like variables. So you can use these variables. Well, you can't actually use all of them. The last three registers are given specific tasks, so those ones are sort of uh, not given to you. But the rest of the registers you can use as variables, so you can store values in them. And uh, an assembly instruction basically just moves a value into a register or does something with it. So, for example, move R1 0xA will simply move the value of hex A into register 1. So basically that's all assembly code is. Every line is just doing something with the registers and uh, or moving them around and stuff like that. So we're just going to write a very basic uh, ARM assembly program. So we've got this new file here called hello.s and a .s just basically means it's going to be recognized as an assembly file. So create a new file. You can do this on your iPhone if you want. You can do this inside of iFile and then compile it later on with Clang. So I just create this file and then open this up. We're going to be using Sublime Text and we're going to get started. So first of all, you'll notice that in assembly code, you'll need to specify a lot more things than you would normally in a high level code such as Objective-C. So for example, you need to specify the actual sections of the binary file. So we're going to be doing, dot, we're going to do dot section and we're going to do underscore, underscore text, comma, underscore, underscore, lowercase text. Now this basically is saying that we're starting the text section of this file, which the text section is where all the instructions are stored. So everything you're going to execute is going to be in this section. There are other sections such as the data section and uh, there's a few other things as well but all we need to focus on now is the text section. So underneath that we're going to do dot global space underscore main. Now this is basically just declaring the main function. Now if you're writing something from complete scratch in ARM assembly then you would actually use a start function and you'd have to set things up a little bit differently but because we're going to be compiling this with Clang on iOS um, it's actually going to create a, a start function for us which is going to call the main function so you don't, really understand, you don't need to understand what that means yet but things would be different if you were writing for example your own operating system using this so underneath that we're going to do dot align to now this is basically the PC align so you don't really need to understand what this means it basically needs, all it does though is um, every next instruction will be incremented by 4 so you just need to put that there to prevent you getting some errors. Anyway, so that's just the start, the setup bit up here. Now we can actually start the main function. So we're going to put a main label. So we're just going to do main and then colon. 
and everything under this is going to be classed under the main function so this will be run as soon as we execute this file so as I did say we're going to be using clang to do this we need to first of all set up the stack otherwise you're going to get some errors when trying to run this because of the fact that we're not doing this completely from scratch so you don't need to understand what this exactly does but we're just going to push two, valid, two uh, registers onto the stack so type push and inside of curly brackets we're going to type r7 comma pc and this is just setting up the stack now you don't really need to worry about what this is at the end you also need to pop them back so do pop r7 pc now actually this first one needs to be lr so we're going to have this push instruction and this pop instruction now everything in between here we can write whatever kind of assembly code instructions and this will be executed so this is just a setup of our file now you're free to do whatever you want in here basically so we use the example that I showed um, a minute ago on the diagram so move r1 comma 0xa now you always put the destination first so mov stands for move which means it's going to move one value from one place to another and then r1 is given as the destination because it's first and then the value is given after that so this instruction is going to move the value of a in hex you could do um just want a hashtag you can have uh, like that if you want it in deanery but you can do it in hex and it's going to move this value into register one so this we can compile this if you get it on the phone all right so i've sshed into my iphone you can see i've got the hello.s file and inside it is the exact contents of what we've just written so you can do this in mobile terminal if you don't want to use your mac so we have this file now and to compile it you're going to be using clang now to do this you need to set up clang and the ios toolchain so look at this video on my channel as well on uh, my main channel how to install fios on ios 10 it's not specific to ios 10 you can install this on any ios version so i'll leave a link to that in the description and then once you've got that set up you're ready to go ahead and compile it so we're going to type clang and then the file name which is hello.s then you're going to do dash i root and then the path to your Fios SDK. So this should normally be in var Fios SDKs. And then the name of the SDK, which is iPhone OS 8.1.SDK, 8 depending on which version you have it for. And then dash o, this will be the output file name. So you can just call this hello. Enter that, and we get one error. Um, oh, well, it seems I forgot to put the comma. So let's just quickly change that on the phone try that again and there we go so this should have worked as long as you didn't get any errors make sure you do you do have to have a comma between the destination and the um, so this comma was included here so a bit comma between the destination and the value um, but now if we ls on this directory you can see we have the hello executable and we can run this by doing dot slash hello and you can see it run and exit straight away so we didn't get any output because obviously all we've done is move the value into a register and that's it there's nothing happening in this program. You can do more advanced things when you get used to ARM assembly. You can print things on the screen and basically write any full application. If you have enough time, you can write a full application. You would normally write an Xcode using this. Obviously, it'll take a lot more time than writing Objective C, but it is possible to do that. Now, if you want to, if you want to actually check that the program did work, there's a little trick you can do. You can do the uh, the name of the program. They do a space semicolon and then echo dollar sign question mark now what this does is gonna run the program and then after that it's gonna run this command which basically prints out the, the value of the last command ever executed so run that and you can see one not sure what actually happened there that shouldn't have output one it should have outputted uh, 10 but I've just changed the register to r0 and um, I've changed the value to 23 just to test it and uh, it does actually work now so you can see we get 23 as the output, so let's just quickly I'll show you what I've done. So it's now just R0 and 23, and you can see that 23 does get outputted, so we successfully moved 23 into this register. So that's basically the fundamentals of how ARM assembly works. Obviously there's much more complicated things you'd end up learning if you get into vulnerability research and other lower level stuff, but hopefully that explains the basics of it. And helps you get started with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So if you have any questions, then tweet me or leave a comment. But yeah, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you next time.